Okay, so for the ones who will watch the recording, thank you for considering watching this event in your own time. And besides having this event recorded for your convenience, the slide deck will be shared um, after the event. And I think we're just adding a few more people. And for the ones who haven't yet, feel free to introduce yourselves in the chat where you're from and what do you currently do? And we'll start. Okay. So to start, we'll just uh, the we'll just introduce ourselves, me and Wendy. Um, so I can start. Um, hi everyone, my name is Melani, or you can call me Lani for short. Uh, I was born and raised in the Philippines and moved to Chicago, Illinois back in May 2010. And I'm currently based out of Skokie, Illinois. I'm a full-time grad student majoring in experience design at DePaul University and a co-president of DePaul User Experience Association, which is the student or collaborator of this event. So a few of the eboard members are with me here in this event and they will introduce DOXA a little bit more. And when it comes to the when it comes to design systems, I personally just learned up more about the term design systems because of its connection with the style guide and just exploring online. I feel that um, having this design systems panel will help fellow junior designers to learn more about design systems from an industry professional perspective. So I hope. Um, everyone in the attendee list can learn more about design systems from these amazing design mentors. And proposing the idea to hold a design systems events was something new to me. And with Wendy, um, it would be interesting to also learn more about design systems. Okay, and I'll pass it over to Wendy. Thanks, Manali. Hello, everyone. I'm Wendy. Um, I'm from Taiwan, born and raised. I'm currently also a graduate student based in Austin, Texas. Um, I'm also very excited to hosting this event because it's my first time being a host. I found it very interesting that um, in schools, design system is kind of back up under discussion. So I feel very excited to learn more about how design system look like in real life today with you all from the mentors. Okay. Thank you, Mandy. Okay, I'll pass it over to eboard members of DUXA, my fellow co-president Maddie and Brandon. Hey everyone, my name is Maddie Williams. I am the also the co-president for DUXA. Uh, I'm a senior studying UX design at DePaul University in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, and I just want to introduce the collaborating student group, DePaul User Experience Association. We are a student-led organization that brings together the DePaul design community. Um, and we just wanna do our best to help students learn about UX design and the industry, collaborate and network with one another. Um, we were established in 2019. And since then we've hosted both virtual and in-person events um, to connect, connect students together and to learn more about UX design and related fields. Um, if you're a DePaul student and you're not a UX design major, don't worry, you can still join us. Um, we are open to all majors. Uh, in the past, we have won the new student org of the year. Uh, and then the next year we won student org of the year again. So we're very proud of that. Um, we're just really glad to have a community built at DePaul. Uh, make sure to check us out on social media. We're going to have a LinkedIn networking event next week. So make sure to keep an eye on that. And I'll go ahead and pass it to Brandon, who will tell you a little bit more about our events. Oh, uh, yeah, thanks. Um, my name's Brandon. I am the vice president of DUXA. I'm a senior user experience design major. And yeah, some of the events that we've had in the past are uh, the AR VR panel, where we had designers come and talk about their experiences creating AR and VR products. Um, we had a career prep week in which we had a live portfolio and resume review. And we also had a speaker come and talk about and ag the agile design process with some career tips. And then we also had the accessibility and inclusive design panel, which was a panel of designers who talked about their experiences work with accessibility and inclusive design. Um, so yeah, 
uh, that's a little bit about what uh, DUXA does. Thank you, Maddie and Brandon. Yeah, like being part of the one of the founding members as well, um, joining in 2019, um, me as a junior college student back then, um, it was exciting to be part of this community where I also um, help lead with these events. And it was an honor to be a co-president right now as a grad student. And I hope in the future, um, the legacy of DUXA will continue um, for the future college students at the Paul University. Um, so I will just share some agenda here. For about eight minutes, we'll have um, the speakers introduce themselves, the mentors, um, and a little icebreaker, and just a little bit about design systems from Wendy and I. And the main chat will take place for about 30 minutes, and the live Q&A will be for um, about 20 minutes. Okay, so it's time to get to know our speakers. The first mentor is Bob Sampson. I'll pass it over to you, Bob. I forgot I was the first slide. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, so I'm the design systems lead at Tangerine Bank up here in Canada. Uh, most of the most of my coworkers are over in Toronto. I'm over here in Vancouver working remote. So I, I started in January and we got a new head of design as well back in December. And so he's kind of the one that really pushed for getting a design system team as well as hiring a bunch of new designers. So I'm actually helping to build out a design system, a dedicated design system team as well, including designers and developers. And again, that's also multi-platform too, including phones and so, yeah, that's me. Okay, thank you. Next one is Matthew. Hello. Um, yeah, so I'm actually originally from San Francisco, um, but I'm now in Singapore. I also work on design systems uh, and I've been working as a designer for almost uh, 12 years now, uh, mostly that would have been in San Francisco. I've worked for kind of startups uh, as well as large companies and enterprise companies as well. So pretty well-rounded experience. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Um, Jenny? Hey, uh, I'm Jenny. I'm working at Atlassian as the principal designer for Atlassian Design System. Um, I'm also based in the Bay Area, but the majority of our team is in Sydney, Australia, but we're starting to build out uh, a team here. Um, our design system is about 10 years old now, so it's pretty interesting to see how it's evolved, but I've been here for about three, three years. Thank you, Jenny. And last but not the least, Derek Tursani. Everyone, I'm Derek. I am located in the eastern part of the United States, specifically in a city called Baltimore, where it is approaching quite the nighttime. Uh, I'm a designer on the design systems at Plaid, uh, where I've been here for just a few months, but have been working on design systems for a few years now. And uh, we are mainly located in uh, the US, but expanding more into Europe. So excited to be here and thankful to be amongst you all. Thank you, Derek. And then the next part of this event is just to get to know what you guys think for the attendees. What do you guys think about design systems? And I have a question for you guys. Um, when you hear about design systems, what do you already know about the topic? So I will share like a link from Mentimeter where you will be able to share um, what you think here on the chat. And you can also scan your scan the QR code here. And then I think since I've shared the link, um, I will also just share, um, I'll share a timer here. So I will also time it here. So for about two minutes, I'll give you guys two minutes to put what you know about design systems when you hear about design systems. So 
So I see some interesting um, statements on here. Um, I see organization, guidelines to create consistent design across platforms. A lot of guidelines mentioned here, library of components, reusable components, collection of parts that make up the whole like Lego blocks, efficiency, style guide, elements of the consistent design starting from atoms ending with structures. That's interesting. Standards and shared practices, a collection of visual elements, design language consistency, scale, colors and UI components. So a lot of similar statements on here, which is a good sign. So <laughs> design system is pretty familiar to some. Okay. Less than one minute left. This one, it is an ecosystem where everything is connected. Its main parts are design principles, voice and tone guidelines, patterns and their guidelines. Okay, it's product itself. Okay, thank you for all your answers here. Less than 30 seconds, any last statements? I see design Bible. <laughs> design Bible. Is that more in the top? Um, in the bottom. Bottom. Oh, oh, there you go. Yeah. Like a design Bible for designing for the product slash company. Okay. The voting is now closed. So from all of this, um, it's understandable that design systems is pretty known, that it's a library of components, guideline of styles, design language consistency, a lot of terms with guidelines, components. So for, for what we will share with Wendy, for I me and Wendy will share, um, just a basic understanding of what design system means. So I will just go back to the slide deck. So what is a design system? So according to Nielsen Norman Group, a design system is a complete set of standards intended to manage design at scale using reusable components and patterns. So design systems is particularly one of the complex job opportunities out there because I can understand that it takes a high maintenance responsibility to ensure the warehouse of UI components stay con staying consistent in a certain product and that teams are at ease with any updates that happen. And to understand the necessity of using design systems, these are just some things in mind as to why it's important. Um, so the first one is the storage for application of designs. So basically design and development work can be created and replicated quickly and at scale. So as products evolve, teams would require storage of pre-made UI components and elements to save time by replicating already made designs and prevent unintended inconsistency. Next one is design resources help simplify design resources to focus on larger, more complex problems. So meaning that since UI elements have already been pre-made, there's less hassle to keep worrying about visual tweaks and instead focus on other parts, including information prioritization, workflow optimization, and journey management. Next one is it creates a unified language within and between cross-functional teams. So because despite shifted responsibilities and designs, Unified language and design systems within different teams help prevent miscommunications. So it's basically a teamwork effort that makes design systems successful. And then next one is it creates visual consistency across products, channels, and potentially silo departments. I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but um, the term silo from what I've learned online is basically when teams work individually and not really share info with other teams of the company. So with the term visual consistency, it simply means that design systems combine every connected components, patterns, styles together so that designs won't be relied on within just an ind individual team. 
So despite any major rebrands, the design system will balance out the changes to make sure everything is still part of the ecosystem. And last one is it can serve as an educational tool and reference for junior level designers and content contributors. So learning about the structure of design systems does help onboard junior designers and content distributors, which leads to some educational learning in the workplace. So this is something to keep in mind for the junior designers attending this event. So up next, Wendy will share more about the different sections and parts of the design systems. Thank you, Melanie. Um, I'll keep short here, but basically it is suggested by Rango that um, there are commonly five components seen in a classic design system. These are all the five elements, but you don't necessarily always see each of them in a design system you might be using. So, um, here, I would like to skip about the details, but if you're interested, definitely check out the article on rango.io. And we'll now just move on to the climax of today, the Q&A session with our mentors. All right, so uh, before I dive deeper, I would like to pause a short bit and see if mentors would like to add on anything. No, okay, cool. Right, so first of all, we, I believe the audience are curious about our mentor stories. So we would like to ask all of our mentors to share a little about how you got started in design system. We'll start from Derek. Oh, sure, thank you. Um, so I, I started working generally more in graphic design and moved into web design and, and eventually into product design until I sort of realized that when I was working on a very large product, there was no like what you all talked about, a single source of truth, this place to source design guidelines and for engineers and designers alike. And as a very organized person myself um, it, it, and who likes to work very efficiently, it was important to me to, to try and create this thing. And having just learned about design systems like some of you, I thought, let's just give this a try. And uh, I just started creating uh, some sort of what was like a, a beginning of a design system and realized that I really, really enjoyed that work of bringing people together and helping people work uh, together a bit better. Um, so uh, since then, I've just been working in design systems and really, really loving it. Okay, Jenny, please. Yeah, um, I'm actually very similar. I started uh, in web design. Uh, and it was just kind of like a hobby. And like, I, I majored in computer science because I think back then there was nothing close to web design. So that I just picked that. And so I was just doing web design on the side for many years. And so when I started working, just flipped back and forth between a web designer and a front end developer for many years. And I think as I was going back in between, between both crafts, I started seeing all the nuances of like how to work efficiently and effectively together. And so at my previous company at Udacity, we actually started uh, doing a big rebrand. And so I started building this HTML CSS framework. And then I realized like we went to these like conferences around then and that's when the buzzword like around 2016, 17, like design systems started coming around. And I was like, wait, this style guide is that thought we're building is actually a design system. And they taught us how to pitch a design system at that um, conference. So I went back the very next day to our product manager was like, I want to build a design system for product. Uh, and ever since then, we were just super hooked and we were able to luckily build one from, from scratch. And then I wanted to focus on that and specialize. So I moved to Alaska and to continue working on design systems. Wow. Okay, Matt, please. Yeah, so I think our backgrounds are quite similar. I also worked in a web design, kind of hybrid design as well. Um, but I also did like some marketing as well. And marketing had their guidelines before, you know, how to use logo, their logo and kind of colors and these type of things. Uh, so I was always interested in kind of building these guidelines as well uh, when I uh, got to know them, uh, just because uh, it does make it easier to design and you have a point of reference. Um, but as how I got into an actual design system role, it was kind of an uh, accident <laughs> because I was, uh, when I was applying for uh, new jobs, there was a role that um, was described as building style guides and it was something I wanted to go into. 
Um, but when I actually entered that role, uh, the team was actually working on design systems uh, and they described it as design systems. So the like job type uh, description and the actual job uh, description was a little bit different. Uh, they didn't match up, but in the end, it, of course, it's quite similar, uh, just terminology, but um, that's how I got in was just uh, by accident wanting to work on guidelines. Uh, and then I learned about design systems at that role. Okay, last but not least, we have Bob. Yeah, it's kind of good that Matt's an accident because mine's kind of the same. Like I've been, I've been in the industry for 20 years, but like I was at my previous company, I was the first product designer in 2016 and the team was growing and growing. It was actually when I left last year, we were like 13, 14 people. But in 2017 is when, you know, design system became more of a sexy buzzword. And because my previous company, we had four, five, six, seven new fresh applications coming and being built by different teams and they were all starting to look different. So as the team was growing, I kind of worked with the director to kind of build the design systems role for myself to kind of start building out, building out our design system for all of our applications. So that's kind of how I got into the role. But actually that, that this, this actually made me think as well going back because between, 20, between 2000 and 2013, I worked at a place that was a Microsoft vendor. So we built a lot of stuff for Microsofties. So I remember that 2007, 2008 is when Microsoft was really pushing their Windows Phone and Windows 8 was coming out, right? And that's kind of where they had the, their Metro design system way back then. So that was kind of my first toe dip into design systems was working with Microsoft's way back when. Wow, that's really amazing. I think one thing I love UX is that somehow we ended up here, but we don't necessarily share a same pass. Okay, so now we have our second question for Jenny and Derek. Um, after being in this industry for years, I wonder how you see design system today? Like what do design system mean to you? We'll start from Jenny. Cool. Um, so it's really interesting to see everybody's uh, feedback on the uh, icebreaker because I think a lot of us focus on the output of what we're building for design systems. And I think over years, my mindset has changed because now I think we are really building design systems for people, right? So let my team focus on the pixels and then let you guys and or the people using the system focus on building the best customer experience. And so for me, like I love building tools and uh, methodologies for people to, to empower them to work better together. But like, I think now I'm more like focused on elevating like the maker's experience while using the system. So this is like your experience of actually interacting with my team or using the actual tool and like elevating your designer developer experience and being in the flow. So like, I've been obsessed with that because like I love being super effective and coding and being in the zone or designing with a really nice system and like, you know, designing super fast. And so I'm really interested in like having and building a great system or tool that helps empower you to do your job really well. And um, so you're not like frustrated or stuck doing the same thing every day. And so like, like my team is now focused on a lot of maker experience, which is really, really interesting to see as we're like maturing the system. How about Derek? Yeah, I, what Jenny said is just said so, so perfectly and exactly how I've grown to uh, understand and work inside of design systems. So to add to what she has said, um, it, it's, it's for me less, uh, less about just like the components, the library, the, the, the documentation, and so much about the relationships with the people that are using these things. These are all just avenues and ways to connect with the people who are actually using it. And while I may build a component in Figma a certain way or document uh, in a certain way of writing a component, ultimately people understand things differently, they digest things differently, and they use uh, things in, in Figma or in code very differently because we're all very different and have different ways of working. And so it's a lot about just really talking to people, learning from them and building those relationships with people. Yeah, I think these are definitely not something we can found online. <laughs> okay, then we here comes our third question for Matt and Bob. What are the challenges you have faced in your past or your current role? Um, for this question, we'll start from Bob. Yep. 
two, two, two kind of things. Like one of them is actually, I don't want to say hammering, making sure that your designers know that we do have that to, so that they get that systems mentality in their brain so that when they make a, something that's new, sexy, it might be cool for what they're doing, but it also affects all the other pages everywhere. Like one example is if, if, if your submit buttons are all on the bottom right and they have one that's on the bottom left and they want that, you kind of have to explain to them it's on the right, but why do you have yours on the left, right? So that's kind of, that kind of segues into the, into the second big thing is actually governance, making sure that their changes, their changes might affect the design system well as well, right? Because you, your design system is, is, is really fluid and dynamic. It's, it's, not, it's, it's, it's not a one-way thing, it's a two-way thing. So making sure that your designers know that they can actually affect the design system as well. It's not just this thing that they consume and they can't actually put back into it. Right. How about Matt? Yeah, um, actually mine kind of tags onto uh, what both Bob and also Jenny and Derek said about design systems. Uh, it's more on the last uh, step that you also mentioned at the like Nielsen Norm group about education uh, <clears throat> for the team. And of course, I really like helping people. That's why I'm on ADP list. I, I also help people at the company I'm at. Um, and one of the things that actually I see that's a challenge is the gap uh, with design systems and new designers. Um, and what I mean by that is if you go back like 10 years ago when there wasn't really design systems, every designer was kind of designing their own uh, components and designing like all the variations for these. Uh, whereas the new designers coming in to a mature design system, let's say you work at, I don't know, Salesforce or like Ant Design System, these are all very mature. Um, and when you go in as a new designer, you're just using the components that are already there. You may have to build some new ones here and there, um, but you don't get that experience of all the nuances that come with building a component and all the variations and kind of edge cases and so on. Uh, so I think that's one of the challenges that I have and still have is kind of how do you like bridge that gap uh, for designers that have only worked with design systems and haven't started something from scratch and built uh, components themselves? Um, because I think that is a problem for let's say the next generation. Uh, how do they get that experience to build components and move into design systems if they want later? Yeah, I think that's exactly the reason why we host this session today, potentially reduce the gap <laughs> especially for us, the entry-level designers. Okay, thank you, Bob and Matt. And here comes our fourth question. Which tools do you use in building design system? Like we know there are plenty of tools out there um, and we'll have Derek to take this. Thank you. Yeah, um, just kind of like I said before, how we all have our different ways of working. Like everyone has their different tools that they like to work in. There's no right language to write code and there's no right uh, design software to, to, to build UI in. Um, there's no right anything really. And we're all just using whatever works for us and our team. And so that's kind of like my first disclaimer is to like never seek the right thing to do or to use. Use what works best for you and your team. And, and, and share that. So others might feel more confident in using what works best for them. For me personally, uh, and for on our, on our team at Plaid, we, we use Figma to design in. Um, before that, we use Sketch. Uh, and uh, I personally, I really like to use Airtable, which is kind of like a spreadsheet um, that I use to organize different components and understand the status of them as I update them and to keep a list of tasks um, I also will use Google Docs to maybe write more, some more documentation without thinking about how does this look in design and in Figma. And uh, we also use Jira a bit to keep track of tickets since that's a thing that engineers use a lot as well. So it's a lot of a collaboration of different tools. Does right. any mentor like to add on any tools that you are using? Okay. Now I'll pass on. To yeah, I do have like just one, oh, one, cool. one quick one. It kind of segues into the challenges because some of us do have challenges that there are tools that we can't use. Like we actually can't have certain tools because we can't have data inside of them. Like actually, like where 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 I'm right where I am right now, it's actually we're 
spending several months just trying to get Figma on board just because of all the IT governance that they have. So which, which of course happens with banks. I'm sure that happens with other companies too. And at my previous company, we actually had, like some of our designers did use client data inside of their mockups, which meant that we can't use Figma because that kind of goes against contracts that we have with our clients. So it actually changed the way that designers design. They can't design with real data anymore. They have to start designing with fake data. Wow, that's definitely a struggle. Okay, I'll pass on to Melanie. Thank you, Wendy. So for the next question, what is the design systems difference between small and large companies? And I'll ask this for Jenny. Yeah, um, so I've kind of experienced both sides of the spectrum here since uh, we built a small design system that I mentioned from the ground up for a startup. And then that was a lot of fun. I feel like when it's a small startup, like you can really get close and lead it as the product owner and you get to wear a lot of hats. So you can wear, you can experience like every, every single part of the system from end to end. Um, and that system we built for about 20 designers and about 60 developers um, for one core product, right? And so it's pretty cool because that, that system, even though the whole team left, that's, that system's still alive today. Um, but then I moved Atlassian maybe three years after building that one. And then, so Atlassian has this like mature, massive company. Um, and it's interesting because it was a top-down initiative versus bottoms up from the before, uh, before. And so at Atlassian, we serve 400 designers and about 1200 developers. So it's almost like times 20 scale and times 20 uh, of increasing complexity. Um, so it's every single thing that we do, like from creation to maintain, maintaining something to deprecating something requires a ton of like communication and change management to go through the system and, and all the dependencies. So I feel like I'm orchestrating like chaos every day now like at the scale, which is really, really interesting, but there's different approaches and strategies to both small and large. And it's like a good reminder because like a lot of people when they see like huge companies or like Atlassian or Salesforce or material design, they're like, oh, we want to aspire to be that, that design system. But I think what it boils to always like remember to just go and talk to your makers. Like what I meant, like we need to build the right thing to meet our makers needs. And so it doesn't matter if it's a small or a big company, like, or if you want to aspire to build a big, big design system, like you have to understand your makers to know to build the right thing. So they'll adopt it. So that's what I've learned from, from both companies, but it's definitely very big scale and very, uh, very similar challenges, but just different in scale. Yeah, thank you for sharing that, Jenny. Cause like personally for me, I'm as a junior designer still like in the job search, figuring out like what type of like industry I wanna be in. And I'm sure like other people on the attendee list um, are also like thinking about like, oh, do, you, do I wanna work in a small or large company? And pretty sure like in large companies, there's a lot of collaboration communication. So that's something to keep in mind for everyone in this um, audience. If you feel like you'd be more comfortable <laughs> communicating with a lot versus like just um, keep it like more condensed. Um, thank you for that, Jenny. So the next one for Matt, how do cultural differences impact your work? Yeah, so <clears throat> this one's, quite interesting. I think it's uh, really about like different work cultures, right? So I worked in quite a few different companies. Um, and I think some companies, it's very easy to adopt design and design systems because they understand the value of the having these guidelines or even just user experience and working closely with product and uh, developers. Um, whereas in larger companies, let's say like Currently, I also work at a bank um, and it's a lot more, let's say, uh, bureaucracy and like politics and kind of you have to sell <laughs> everything and kind of show value with everything. And when you don't have a design system, how do you show the value of a design system to um, your stakeholders? Uh, so depending on the company you go to, right? Like there may be like, you may be smooth sailing, just designing like, uh, having a good time, uh, but in other companies, uh, like 60% of your work is just uh, presenting and trying to tell the story of design systems and getting stakeholders on board. 
So I think uh, every company does have their own challenges and um, their own like uh, ups and downs. Um, so I think being able to work in a few different companies also has really allowed me to realize the like value of design systems, but also be able to speak with stakeholders and work with developers and product owners and uh, so on. So I think, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. Maybe like just a little like quick follow up to that. Um, yeah. Since you've worked in different companies, have you experienced like a certain difference where other companies might be more familiar with design systems versus other companies who might need a bit more like time to understand from the designers like you to like explain them how things work yeah and usually in this case it's uh yeah so i've worked at companies definitely for example i have experience at apple of course they have their guidelines they're like ready to go with design um and then for example at my current company a bank uh of course, it's much more like hard to sell. I think uh, some of the ways to go around this is uh, being able to work with developers. I think you need to have kind of backing with people that understand you first. So kind of find the people in the company that do value design systems and understand the value and kind of work together and work up the chain like one by one, right? Like <laughs> it's not an easy path. Uh, for example, uh, we've been working on accessibility and it's been a little over two years I've been at the company trying to push accessibility and just now uh, we're starting to pick it up, right? So it's not always a just like two, three month battle with stakeholders. It can be like one year, two year and quite slow moving depending on the company you're working at. So I think part of it also is just having the patience if you do work at one of those companies that you really have to uh, coordinate your, I guess you could say plan with, uh, penetrating like the stakeholders with your design systems and <laughs> value yeah yeah i think that the term like patience is like a big thing that's that i'm sure it's pretty important when working on design systems because like since it's like a whole lot of component libraries of components that you guys work on um i can understand that it will take a lot of patience to um, be mindful about the consistency and also collaborating with um, your coworkers. Okay, the next question is for Bob. What kind of skills are expected to see in applicants from your experiences with um, hiring um, employees? I guess the really big one is communication because you're going to have to be communicating with your designers, your developers, the product owners, the higher ups, the lower downs, everyone, right? So like, especially like, I'll give one example. We actually wanted to introduce some shadows into some of our designs. And if I did not communicate with the developers, I would not have found out that Android does not do shadows very well. So having that feedback from them kind of makes us make these decisions on where we want to go as well. So that's kind of one of the big things that that's kind mm -hmm. of important. And I guess this, this might sound silly, but look at some job postings for design systems leads people and that'll actually show all the bullet points of the kind of things that they'll be owning. Um, would it be helpful like before even applying to those design system roles, would it be helpful to like reach out um, to design system leads first? before even considering if it would it's the right role for them or just go in there and apply. Yep, I think it's because you're, you're not gonna be that individual contributor anymore, right? You're gonna have this different role you're into. And some people, some people might get into this role and say, I kind of miss being an individual contributor. So yeah. Okay, thank you. Anything um, quick to add from the other mentors? Um, yeah, I have one. Uh, also, just understanding, I think this is to add on to what Bob said, um, but understanding the scalability of what you're building uh, and how it impacts the different platforms, um, but also understanding different edge cases and like as the design system uh, matures, you're going to have to understand patterns and uh, how error messages, for example, or corner cases and these type of things should appear in your design system for guidelines. So I think really understanding all the like different intricacies of your like product and how that would work. So 
being detail oriented to sum it up. <laughs> Thank you. Um, any last statements? Yeah, if, if I can add maybe one, um, it's maybe more of like a soft skill, but I think humility is really important in the work of design systems as it is, as it is a, a role around learning and being willing to not say that this is the right way to do something, but learn from others and learning how, what is the right way to do something and how to build uh, a tool or an element that, that works for how people need to use it. Um, so being willing to make mistakes and, and own those mistakes and learn uh, to better improve the things that you're providing for others. Thank you. Thank you for all um, the skill sets that you shared. I think it's pretty understandable as a, um, as someone in design, um, having humility, understanding are all like um, important aspects that designers should have, I think overall in any design roles. But yeah, thank you. Um, and the last um, pre-made question is for Jenny. Uh, what are resources you recommend to learn more about design systems? Yeah, I think um, we also have a lot of links that we can send out, right? So mm -hmm. yeah, uh, the design systems community is super amazing. I think all of us already kind of sort of know each other from the, uh, from the community very close. Um, you can find a lot of kind-hearted like practitioners on Twitter um, who really like openly share their knowledge every day. Um, but there's like the, yeah, they just sent all the links out, but there's like a Slack community on design.systems slash Slack. Um, there's a handbook that can get you started. Um, there's an amazing newsletter uh, that someone sends out every, oh, a lot, like they, that guy like reads every single article out there and sends the best articles for that newsletter. Um, and then there's also another conference that's annual called Clarity Conference by, by Gina. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. So I think we have a good, um, about like 15 minutes to um, get the live Q&A ask. Um, so um, earlier um, I got um, the Q&A link shared. Um, so I will share the questions that were asked based on the uploads as well, we'll prioritize the ones that were vote more higher. So I think, yeah, this is the questions. So there's 21 questions. So for sure on like the other questions that may not be asked, um, we can collect them um, and possibly the mentors can answer them um, in their own times. But um, we may only be able to ask about five. I think that's a good chunk. Um, so based on the upvotes, um, the first, um, Top one is how to show NDA protected design system work on portfolio website. Do any of you mentors have a response for this question? Yeah, I remember having some conversations in some chats or somewhere with uh, like Jared Spool. He was actually breaking stuff like this up. Like his big thing was just reach out and ask them if you could put it on your portfolio. Because that's the simplest way. Because I didn't have a lot of my Microsoft work in there because I had 13 years of NDA. And it's just, if it just put it in. <laughs> but, <laughs> but again, yeah, ask out and reach is kind of nice. Okay. Anything else for the other mentors? Uh, for me, when I'm doing portfolio interviews, so usually the designer is presenting a portfolio that's in the form of a presentation. So maybe the if the portfolio is online, usually it's behind a lock, like some kind of lock or unprotected. Or if it's a presentation, they usually are mentioning, hey, this is NDA, please do not share this anywhere. Um, and it's only within the presentation they're sharing, not like live anywhere. Okay. So basically have like um, a lock protection just for, for the, especially I guess for like, I'm assuming, if it's company based as well, it would be mindful to have it um, protected. Okay, um, if there's nothing else, I'll go to the next question. In what kind of company slash situation do you think design system might not be necessary? Anyone who wanna um, respond to that? Uh, I'll go. I'm not sure. I think there are so many opportunities for many designs. If you think of like an ice cream shop or any sort of 
restaurant, I come, I grew up in the restaurant business. So I always go back to that, that the way you organize the food and the ingredients to, to make the items that are on the menu or the way that you build a car and the, the instructions and, and the parts that go into that. Um, uh, maybe it, I, I hesitate to say a very, very early uh, company because uh, I, maybe the rest of us here would agree that, that I find myself constantly joining design systems when in a time where it's where, where you have to just reconcile all of the design and tech debt um, that was built in very early. Um, so I, I, I encourage you to think about design systems very early, but yeah, I'll leave it there. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, design systems are also for code. So if they have spaghetti crap everywhere and they start growing, it's just going to be a mess. But having this design system thinking inside of your with your developers, so they actually build components to be extendable. That's really important. Yeah. I don't think the uh, design system has to be very in depth for startups, right? It can just be, here's your colors, here's your typography, here's a few components going to the ice cream shop example, right? You're not gonna have so many components anyways. So it may be something very small, um, but I think guidelines are guidelines. Uh, no matter what you call it, if, it's design, if you consider that a design system or not, it can eventually grow into a design system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for the responses. Um, if there's nothing else, I'll go to the next question. What skill, I think that this was already asked for one of the questions, but what skill set are essential to have when creating, building, or maintaining a design system? Any additional comments on this one? If not, we can just go to the next one. I can add uh, specific skill sets, which are um, having a strong background in visual design. So if you think about it, design system teams are setting stand and building tooling for user interface, like architecture. So having a good mix of skill sets across like uh, visual design, information design, interaction design, and front end code, that's what we look for in my team, um, having that deep understanding of these foundations and like accessibility, typography, spacing, color, because you're setting the standards to the way people are designing and developing um, at your company. Uh, and the second one really is around like, uh, it was related to the humility one that Derek mentioned, but like having understanding and empathy, but that you're going into a service role. So like, if you don't like customer service, don't go into design systems because you're really, helping and bring all of those designers and developers and you have to be very patient. And, you know, sometimes they won't be happy with you, but you have to like take it because that, that's your role to be there for them. Cool, thank you. Um, I'll have Wendy ask the next question, if it's fine with you, Wendy. I yes. think we can ask um, two, three more, um, depending on the responses. So, oh. I think, yeah, this one, yeah. Okay, so. So if you are to start a brand new design system today for a big brand and had complete freedom to do what you want, are there established design system that you start with as a foundation? I think this is a good question. <laughs> Anyone want to take on this one? Uh, I think <clears throat> I would, I don't have a specific design system. I think it really depends on the product you're working on. Like if you're working for e-commerce, I would look at Polaris. If you're looking at enterprise, maybe Salesforce, Lightning system. Um, as far as a structure, uh, I wouldn't say like when you, uh, sorry, in the question when it says that you start with, uh, I wouldn't say that you're copying the design system, but really just seeing how they structure and plan out some of their components and guidelines. Uh, to take that as guidance as you start your design system. Mm, yeah. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll bring up Adobe Spectrum, because if you go to Adobe Spectrum and look at one of their components, like a button or anything, scroll to the very, very bottom of that page, they have this huge checklist of things for the component, which includes like WCAG, meeting all the colors, meeting all the content, making sure the Figma components are built. They have this huge checklist, which is a, a real cool way of you to think of how a, one component is actually a bigger thing than just a little button. Yes, I yeah, also actually, think, no. yeah. I think considering oh. how many platform you'll include in the design system, it also 
a very important factor. Okay, anything to add on? No, okay, then next one. Wow, okay, how do you approach creating a design system when the engineers already use a library like Semantic or Bootstrap? Oops, sorry, I clicked something, there you go. <laughs> Have any of our mentors encountered this situation before? <clears throat> I, I, oh, go I ahead. We all have. Oh. Um, yeah, I, we've probably all encountered this. Um, and I, I think in my experience, you know, having engineers use something like Bootstrap, which was what they were using in my, in my experience, uh, it, it was a place to start from. It was something that they already understood the value of design systems and um, working efficiently with some sort of library. And it was a place that we could take what was already there and actually evolve those React components specifically for this example um, into our own design system. So, uh, it, it, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a helpful place to start. Um, I remember Jenny or Matt yeah, um, I think something to consider too is like when you do start thinking about building a design system, sometimes you don't have a lot of resources. So maybe we like if we only had say one or two engineers, then we might have to decide to make and pick a solution to build upon an existing system first. So sometimes there's that kind of like you got to do a little kind of like a little analysis of all the different tools that you have and you have to decide should we our own or should we um, get use something to get us started faster, like semantic or bootstrap. Because I know at my last company, we actually did this very piecemeal. We actually used a third party called Kendo. It's probably, you've probably heard of that. So what, what are these other things? So, but we made the things look the way we wanted them to, right? We made the button, the color with the rounded corners that we wanted it to. Everyone, everything looked the way we wanted it to. Then when, when we started building our own design system, we started very small. We made our own button from scratch and then just kind of everyone started to consume that to the point where now we didn't have to use that Kendo button anymore. So we just started with piece by piece by component by component until every single component is yours. That's another way of doing it. Small steps, baby steps. Yes, thank you. And now we have our last question of today. What kind of design task can we expect during the interview for system designer role? I think this is referring for like an interview. Yeah, an interview, <laughs> it's, on, it's on there. Um, some that I've had in, in my experiences of interviewing for design system roles uh, is, is common, commonly to look at some different uh, components or components in use in, in a larger kind of uh, user interface design and really nitpick like the details that, that stick out to me. Um, and, and I'd be asked what things might I, might I be thinking about or do differently. Um, and, I, and I think that goes back to, I forget who said it, but, but be, about being very detail oriented. Um, so that's something like that skill that they're looking for, um, that when you can point out, uh, sometimes if you're doing a design review, you might not be, the feedback people might not, might not be looking for is, is to, to look at the, the pixel differences between things or the very slight color variations, but in design systems work, that's very relevant. So it's okay to do that if that's what they're looking for. Okay. I think um, we're just about to um, hit the 8 p.m. mark, 8 p.m. Central. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the presentation mode. So for the ones who are still here, you can book a next session with these mentors. Um, so for the ones who haven't done mentorship before, this is your time to book a session with them if you'd like to learn more about design systems. So you can just um, scan with your QR, with the QR codes here. Um, and with this slide deck that we'll share, the slide deck, um, we'll share it anyway. So um this isn't the only time we'll be able to see the qr codes so this will lead that uh this will lead to their um session page 
Um, and yeah, for the next slide, these are just social media platforms for ADP list. Um, we have a medium, LinkedIn, um, Instagram, Twitter, and the website where you can book the sessions. And as what um, Wendy shared earlier, the link for the Excel sheet to connect with other attendees um, are here. I think, yeah, I think you shared a direct message, Wendy. So the link um, will be shared um, with you guys. There you go. Um, and yeah, thank you so much guys for staying um, in this meeting, in this session. Um, and thank you so much for the mentors um, to volunteer their time to um, help learn about design systems. I hope um, it helped you guys with attendees. Um, and as what I mentioned, the slide deck will be shared and we will have a recording. Um, most likely this recording will be shared on YouTube, on ADP List's YouTube channel. Um, not sure how soon it will be released, but um, stay tuned for any updates. Um, and for the questions we weren't able to ask, um, we'll, we'll collect them in a document and we'll just contact um, the mentors um, regarding those questions if um, they could be answered um, in their own times. But yeah, thank you so much, guys. Um, it's, the, it's past 8 p.m. now. I hope you have a good rest of your day, evening, um, wherever you are. Um, and also have a great weekend in advance for the ones who are, um, it's not the weekend yet, <laughs> but also like have a good weekend. Thank you guys. Um, yeah, bye guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. bye. Okay, just stop the recording. Okay, can you stop the recording, Wendy, if that's fine? It's yeah. Not